What are the mechanics of impeachment in the first place? And where is this going to lead us? To help answer these questions, I'm joined by senior legal fellow, Heritage Foundation's Hans uh, Spakovsky. Hans, good to see you as always. Well, thanks for having me. All right, Hans, t- talk to me about this. They were, this has happened, I think, once before. There was a secretary of defense who was impeached after resigning, I think it was. So there's some precedent for that, but never a president. What is the process here? Before we get into the constitutionality of this, the legal arguments against it, what are the Democrats hoping to achieve? I mean, at the end of this, do they vote specifically on, on what? Well, if you look at the uh, Constitution, there's provisions in Article 1, Article 2 regarding impeachment. And clearly, the impeachment provision was put in the, in there to remove a current federal uh, officer or civil officer of the United States. And what it says is that upon conviction, that judgment, which means conviction means removal from office, but that conviction can also include barring you from ever holding a federal officer again. And, and clearly, they can't remove him from office because he's already out. He's a private citizen. So they clearly want to ensure that he doesn't run for president again in four years. That's obviously their political motive for doing this. And so if, if he is convicted, is there some kind of, you know, usually in, in a criminal trial, for example, if you have a conviction, then right. you go to the sentencing phase. How would that work here? I mean, would if I mean, it's unlikely we all know because the Senate held a already held a vote thanks to Senator Rand Paul, and I think 45 Republicans said that they viewed this whole thing as unconstitutional. So I don't think they're going to say it's unconstitutional, and then a whole bunch of them all of a sudden go along and say, you know what, we're actually right. believing that this was uh, that this was legitimate. But but just putting putting that aside for a moment. Um, If he's convicted, is it automatic that he's barred from office or does that get worked in? Okay, so that's the part I want to know about. Yeah, no, that has to be worked in. And to give you good examples of that, um, uh, some years ago, uh, uh, the the, uh, Congress impeached a federal judge in Florida. Uh, He decided to then run for Congress and he's been in Congress ever since. And that's because when Congress convicted, when Senate convicted him of impeachment to remove him as a federal judge, they did not bar him from holding future office. So in that's this case, Alice, go ahead, go ahead. That's that's Congressman Hastings of Florida. Very interesting backstory there. So there yeah. is that possibility. You're not expecting that this will actually go through, but before I'm, I'm, I'm assuming, but I, I want to ask you that. But also, what do you make of the the argument that many Republicans in the Senate are making that this is just flatly unconstitutional on its face. Oh, I I totally agree with them. Again, if you look at the Constitution, the whole purpose of the impeachment clause was to remove a sitting federal official. You cannot impeach a private citizen. Yeah, they point to this precedent uh, in 1875, sorry, 1876, of uh, William Belknap, the former Secretary of War. But even at that time, it was extremely controversial, the idea of impeaching him when he was no longer in office. And it's never happened since. 150 years almost, and this has never been done. And that's because it clearly is unconstitutional to do this. How is the president's defense when he's not the president? I mean, how does the you know, Hans, it's always hard to talk about. How does the ex-president provide a defense of himself as president in the Senate under the procedures as they're playing out right now? Well, he's already hired a lawyer, actually someone I know out of South Carolina, a guy named Butch Bowers, who's organizing the defense team. Uh, and they will appear in the Senate to argue the case. But here's what people need to understand. This is not like a criminal trial. You know, this is not a a situation where the usual rules apply that would apply to court of law. The rules are whatever the Senate says they are. So, for example, if the president wants to present witnesses on his behalf, he won't be able to do that unless the Senate agrees that he can provide witnesses. So what we may end up having is simply the lawyers on each side presenting their arguments, and then you may get written questions from the senators, but there may not be any outside witnesses. Hans, before we let you go, just uh, leaning again on your legal expertise here, 
there was a, a setback for the Biden administration with these big executive orders right off the bat uh, in Texas right. having to do with enforcement of immigration law. Tell us about what happened here and, and how all this went down. Well, in essence, the uh, Biden administration said that they were going to halt all deportations of aliens are here illegally for 100 days. And the court basically said, uh, you can't do that. You know, you, you can't simply say you're not going to enforce federal law on a wholesale basis like that. So that's been temporarily halted while the case goes on. And also, you, you might have seen today uh, in, in Politico, they have a story about the uh, forming, the Biden administration forming a Supreme Court Review Committee. Right. What is this all about? Well, obviously, this is his uh, gift to the left, which, as you know, has been talking about the fact that Congress needs to pack the court. In other words, expand the number of justices from nine uh, so that they can put liberals on the court to outvote the conservatives on the court. And obviously, they're going to want this commission to come up with a recommendation saying, oh, yeah, yeah, that's that's the right policy. We, we need to do that. I mean, what, why else would they form a commission like that? It, it just seems so absurd. I mean, is there really any chance, Hans, that they're not going to say that they should pack the court after this commission no. comes together? <laughs> I mean, why even go through no. the exercise of this? I mean, I've got to assume no. that even within the legal profession, I know there are a lot of uh, liberals running around with law degrees. They got to recognize, I mean, this is like a stunt. Yeah, no, this is just to give them political cover for what they want to do, which is, like I said, pack the court so they can outvote the conservatives and basically get whatever they want, no matter what the Constitution says. Hans Spakovsky down at Heritage. Hans, always good to have you, sir. Thanks for watching the Heritage Foundation's YouTube channel. With more than half a million members, we are the nation's largest conservative research and education institution. We believe the principles and ideas of the American founding are worth conserving and renewing. Please help us further our mission by subscribing to this channel and sharing our videos with your family and friends.